want you to come to Chicago and visit 3639 Wrigley Rooftop. Go Cubs, go! I think of this place, I think of music, sports, and food. Yes, we're talking about Chicago, a.k.a. Chi town like the morning. What the f*** do you want? I think I'll have a Chicago hot dog with extra what? ketchup. What? what? Can I have a hot dog with extra ketchup? We don't put ketchup on our motherfucking hot dogs. What should I get on it then? Chicago style ass white. Chicago, located in the middle of America, is one of the largest populated cities with almost 3 million residents. Chicago is positioned on the southern tip of Lake Michigan and is listed as one of the world's largest financial centers. There are many ways to take in this beautiful city. From 103 stories up on top of the Willis Tower, or maybe cruise through the downtown area by boat on the Chicago River. But my favorite way is by walking around to get the true pulse of the city. But I'm hungry. And I can't come to Chicago without trying the famous Chicago-style pizza. What makes a Chicago-style pizza different from other pizzas? I wanted to know myself. So I headed to the famous Lou Malnati's, said to be the original creator of Chicago-style pizza. I'm gonna tie you up. Mindy Kaplan, the director of marketing, allowed me to get the behind-the-scenes look at what makes a Chicago-style pizza. What makes a Chicago-style pizza? What, what is a Chicago-style pizza? It really starts with the crust, and our crust is something that's very unique. You're doing it, you're actually pulling the pizza, patting it out, and pulling it up so it's making a nice shell okay. to hold in all of these hearty ingredients. What happens next is we put on the cheese. Okay. So the cheese goes on the, the crust, and first. it's that blend of that crust and the cheese that makes it so amazing. And then, we put on the sausage. And in Chicago, you have to have sausage of on course, your pizza. We're gonna put tomatoes on top of this. Like you said, it's a little it's upside first, down. Yeah. So the tomatoes are gonna go on last. What you have here are full chunks of tomato that are pressed in to make this sauce. And they are sweet and tangy and have the perfect flavor. We top it with a little Parmesan mixture. In the oven it goes. Now this will take about 30 minutes. What are you going to make for us? What are we eating? Of course, you have to have sausage pizza while you're here. But we can also make a loo, which is our vegetarian specialty okay. pizza. And that's called the loo. And that's called the loo. Very cool. Well, I'm excited to try some Chicago style pizza. My first ever, actually. I've never oh, had Chicago pizza. Well, you will be, you're going to love it. Took my good luck, some money too. You can't come to Chicago without trying a Chicago style pizza. And Lou Malnati's is by far the best. This is really good. I think it's about time to walk off some of that pizza and check out a few more sites. I was quickly reminded of all the great attractions the Windy City had to offer a traveler. From the famous Grant Park that hosted President Obama's acceptance speech, to the Navy Pier that houses a replica of the very first Ferris wheel, or maybe I can grab a comedy show at the theater that founded many of the great comedians that we all know of today. I think I've seen enough for today and worked off that pizza. Now back to catch the free barbecue at the hostel. I'm here with Matt Meadows, the general manager of Chicago Getaway Hostels. You got it. Tell us about your hostel. What makes it tick, Matt? So the best thing about our hostel is that it's uh, big. We have uh, 116 rooms. 116 rooms, that's massive. Yeah, it's pretty big, 330 beds. Okay. Uh, we have 16 dorms, and then we have a lot of good events to get all of our guests engaged. Uh, Fridays and Saturday nights, we do our barbecue. Good meet and greet when you first check in, have some free food, have a drink, and uh, hang out with the other guests. Sporting events, pub crawls, blues bars. You guys have it all, yeah. so. Yeah, a great restaurant kitchen. People can prepare their meals, cook together on a grand piano and three guitars, so 
for a music mecca at this so hostel. You can have a jam session yeah, any yeah. night. Yeah. Lobby, free Wi-Fi, so it's always bustling with a lot of activity. Oh, nice. It's about this amazing area where your hostel yeah. is in. So we're in Lincoln Park. Uh, Lincoln Park's about a mile and a half north of downtown. Okay. It's a great historic neighborhood. Um, tons of bars, university area with DePaul, free zoo, and we're right on the Lake Michigan. Okay. So you kind of have everything at your back door. Well, thanks for hosting us, Matt. Now, can I grab one of those burgers, buddy? Yeah, you bet. Let's do a burger. A few of the backpackers wanted to hit the local bars, so we decided to grab some drinks in the historic Lincoln Park area where the hostel is located. All right, we're hanging out at a bar here in Chicago. We're with the Getaway Hostelers. Cheers. Where are you from? Chattanooga, Tennessee. Chattanooga, Tennessee. Yes. And you traveled all the way here and decided to stay in a hostel. Awesome place. And great staff. You know, very friendly. I mean, to lead the pub crawl and have activities to meet people. Somebody from where I'm from, I mean, that's awesome. Great way to meet other backpackers. I know, right? I can never turn out a drink either. All in all, not a bad first day and night in Chicago. On tap for tomorrow is to learn about America's favorite national pastime. That's right, folks. I'm talking about baseball. <laughs> Chicago is home to many sports teams. Everyone knows the basketball team, the Bulls, thanks to Michael Jordan. The American football team, the Bears, yes, the Bears. But what about baseball? I personally never understood the sport myself, nor really cared about it. Chicago is home to two baseball teams, the Cubs and the White Sox. What I learned is that the people from the North tend to be Cubs fans, and the people in the South tend to be White Sox fans. It's really not that simple either. Since the Cubs are one of the original Major League Baseball teams, I figured they were my better option to do a little research on what it's like to be a fan of baseball, and more specifically, a fan of the Chicago Cubs. So I rented a bike from the hostel and headed to Wrigley Field. Can you guys help me out? Why do you guys like the Cubs? Wrigley Field! We are Chicago! You guys are Chicago? Wrigley Field is the party party. Place. The party, party. Place. And you can watch the game, party, and have fun. Yeah. Let's go, Cubs! What makes you from Chicago? Everything. 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 Chicago is crazy wild. You know? Wait, if I start shouting, I love the Sox, it's not a good thing. Right now. You probably should okay. try it. I dare you. You dare? You I dare you. Care you. Of? <laughs> so, liking the Sox in this area of town is not a good idea. No, you're on Wrigley Field. Come on. Jamie Hayes Seltzer, this is Keith Novak. We're here live at Wrigley Field. Fabulous time. You should all come and uh, experience the Chicago love. She's actually talking to an ice cream cone if you haven't caught that. That's not really a microphone. Yeah, it is. She's <laughs> girls gone wild. Don't listen to her. She's girls gone wild. Girls gone wild here in Chicago. Now, who's your, who's your favorite player? Who's the best player on the coast? You know Ryan Sandberg was my favorite. Was? Back in the day. What happened to him? Well, he's retired. So who's your favorite player? Ramirez! 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 No, Ramirez! Ramirez! Where are you from? I'm the one that's doing the interview. Yeah, so uh, I'm doing ice cream I have the ice cream cone. <laughs> so more interesting. I'm talking to an ice cream cone. The Cubs are crazy. Things. I'm still not sold on this Cub and baseball thing. I may have to do a little more research, but we'll save that for later. You want that Wrigley Field experience? It's in the bag, baby. But it's time to experience something else that makes Chicago, Chicago. That's so hot. Next on The Hostel Life. Power tools and hot dogs. I like it. I've been in Chicago for about three days now, and I still haven't had a hot dog yet. Silly me. Hot dogs have had a cloud of controversy of who and where this processed meat was first placed in a bun. 
In the year of 1893 at the Columbian Exposition in Chicago, it was said that this inexpensive, convenient food was presented to the masses for the first time. Originally, white gloves were used to handle the piping hot sausages, but most of the gloves were not returned, therefore the introduction of the bun. The Chicago Doghouse has been only open for two years. They have already developed a loyal customer base. They offer gourmet hot dogs. Yes, I said it, gourmet hot dogs. The Doghouse offers exotic dogs such as buffalo, rabbit, and kangaroo, just to name a few. They even offer a vegetarian option for my non-meat-eating friends. We go to school in Hyde Park, like yeah. the route to the south side of Chicago. So it's like, I mean, it's, it's like, it's like half an hour. hour to get yeah, up yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I wanted to find out more about hot dogs and why the customers of Chicago's Doghouse drive from different parts of Chicago just to eat their dogs. So I asked Aaron Wolfson, one of the founders, to give me a behind-the-scenes look at his creations. You want, you want to get a perfect Chicago dog, right? A perfect Chicago dog. So what makes a Chicago dog? What toppings do you got to put on here? Start off with some mustard right here, okay? A little mustard. Some yellow mustard. Take some nice sliced tomatoes, crushed tomatoes. All right. Get a little bit of raw chopped up onions. Nice. Get some really neon green relish here. Sport peppers. Good lord. Load them up with peppers. Dill pickle. Salt it up with some celery salt. Celery salt. Is this like a traditional this way? A traditional Chicago That's it right there. Right here. Get a closer of this. This is a traditional Chicago hot dog. When you come to Chicago, you got to come here and try this. You guys make alligator hot dogs. You make alligator hot dogs here. No way. You do. So what goes on the alligator sauce? What goes on the alligator It's a very simple sauce this year. What we do is we use an Asian chili sauce. My boy. Throw a little My bit boy. of Asian chili sauce on that guy. What kind of onions are those? These are some caramelized onions. Caramelized Secret onions. Secret recipe. Secret recipe. That's, that's it. Oh, that's, that's a good dog right there. I yeah. saw you had a Snoop Dogg, a Snoop Dogg. We do. Yeah. He hasn't come in yet, but... It's not coming in from the LBC? You know what, I'm thinking <laughs> so. about emailing someone. You to should. Try to get him in here. You should, because you know? that way maybe you can add that extra G. So these are our version of french fries here. Yeah, making some frips. Frips. It's like an earring, you know? It is. Yeah. <laughs> Power tools and hot dogs. I like it. Well, thanks, dog. No problem. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. All right, it's time to take a bite out of this Chicago hot dog. Oh man, the jalapeno is hot. <laughs> Whoa, that's a good hot dog though. Straight from the Chicago River, alligator dog. It's really good. It doesn't taste like alligator, it tastes like chicken. It tastes like chicken, just like everything else, right? Chicago is a great place for good old American cuisine, as we just saw, and architecture as we have been seeing, but it's home to one of my favorite types of music as well. That's right, the blues. Da -na 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 -na. The Chicago blues, which incorporates a larger range of notes than the traditional six note blues scale, could be originally heard on the street corners of the south side of Chicago. The music quickly gained popularity and many blues clubs started popping up all over Chicago and even started reaching the north side. We had a great day here in Chicago. And the now, best way to top it off is here. Famous, Listen to the blues. It kicks the line. I sat down with Dr. Duke Tomato, the doctor of blues himself, to find out what made him decide to start playing the blues. You are a blues specialist, is that correct? Can I say that? Yeah, you can probably say something like that. Tell us about the blues. Like, why the blues? Why did you want to play the blues? I grew up on the south side of Chicago okay. in the 50s and 60s, and I, I, I grew up listening to the music. In Chicago, they played the music on the radio. And I met Muddy Waters, spent a lot of time with Muddy Waters, and Buddy Guy, and Willie Dixon, and uh, Oliver Wolf. Wow. All the guys I, I listened to when I was growing up. Let's get loose! Let's get loose! Let's get loose! Let's get loose! 
very kind to me. I've had a wonderful life playing blues. So yeah. But part of uh, 45 years, I've had my own band. 45 years playing yeah. blues. What does the blues mean to you? Like when I'm performing, I have oftentimes been in the room, but not, not in the room. room. And it's a very great source of energy at several levels. Very fulfilling for an artist to do. The essence of it is, is expressing yourself completely, and it's uh, been a great blessing. Been a great blessing. So everyone's passage, both physically and spiritually, is unique. Accept and enjoy that. Rock on. I like it so far. Hi, my name is uh, Joel. I am from London, England. If you had a tip for a traveler, what would it be? Tip for traveling? Wow, okay. Um, number one, it's got to be earplugs. I mean, sleeping in dorms of dudes, I mean, some people get a bit rowdy at night. And uh, just snoring, man, does my head in. <laughs> so, um, yeah, earplugs are definitely for sure. My name is Amber Livingston. I'm from a Geelong, Australia. My travelling tip to people would be don't lose your passport, don't lose your camera, don't lose your ID and your credit card or your phone. In one night. In one night. Bad idea. Really bad idea. Just don't do it. That's my travelling tip to everyone. Next on The Hustle Life. For the best chocolate milkshake in all of Chicago. F*** <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
We got our friend Alejandro back there. We're going to convince him to order the chocolate milkshake. You're going to see what the chocolate milkshake is. Let's go. Tomasi is the shake. And the the shake stuff. is $20. Oh. I just bought, I bought your meal. It's, 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 it's really good. It's, it's worth it. What? It's worth it. Argentina! It's bigger than your head. Shout! Shout! Yeah! <laughs> 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 the best chocolate milkshake in all of Chicago. <laughs> That's where they came to music. <laughs> Their service is entertaining. If you don't want the chocolate milkshake, they do have pretty damn good Chicago style dogs. Discovering Chicago has been a blast. From tasting the backbone of the Americana cuisine, this is really good. Walking around and enjoying the photogenic architecture and city skyline. Attending a Cubs game at the historic Wrigley Field. And finally kicking back to some soulful Chicago style blues. So until next time, keep your mind free, your eyes open, because you never know what adventure awaits. Chicago underneath the festival lights, the streets are going mad. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs>